So as much as doctors like myself like to act like it's all up here, really a lot of it is in here. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly my favorite apps to use as a physician. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name is Lakshan, internal medicine physician, helping you succeed on your journey, but doing it with less stress. Today is going to be a fun video because I'm going to be sharing you with you step-by-step -step my favorite apps that I use on a daily basis as an internal medicine physician. Now getting into my apps, my favorite apps happen to be in my medical folder. So I'll click them here and we'll just go through them one by one. Now my favorite app that I end up using right now is up to date. Most medical students are familiar with what up to date is, but basically it allows you the option of basically searching anything. So if I wanted to look up a medication like I did recently, like mexilatine, which is an antiarrhythmic that we use for a lot of things, especially things like ventricular arrhythmia. So here you go. If I wanted to see what dose it was, I can easily look that up. And if I wanted to read about some things, let's see what topics I've looked up in the past. Um, I looked up aspiration pneumonia and kind of guidance on antibiotics recently. So I can just kind of go treatment for things like chemical pneumonitis and read this really quickly. Now, the best part about being a physician is just being able to get through some of this information to quickly answer a question from a patient or a fellow medical student. Um, and so really, I've gotten really good at just like searching information um, really quickly. So I love up to date. So if you don't have it on your phone, ask your institution if they give you access. And if they do, definitely make sure you put it on your device. Now, my next favorite app that I love using mainly for the source of questions, because there is some downtime on my data day, whether I'm waiting for something to happen with a patient or I'm waiting for my attending to kind of come around. I love using MixApp. Now, MixApp is your equivalent of something like UWorld for medical school, um, where you're essentially using questions to help you study for me, in my case, my internal medicine boards that I'll be taking next year. So I can easily kind of set up quizzes. And so right now I'm on a consult service for cardiology, so I can just do questions um, every single day. And so if I'm waiting for the attending or if I've seen patients and I'm waiting for new patients to come, I can easily do these questions. And so um, my performance really doesn't matter to me more so. I just kind of have these questions around. And it's a really great tool because as I'm making this video, I'll have to take my boards in about a year, but not having to do this in a very stressful environment and just kind of casually doing questions throughout the day makes it very fun. Now, my next favorite app that I love using is the Human DX app. Now, I've talked about this in past videos, but if you're really wanting to flex your muscle as a physician and see certain cases and seeing if you can solve them as information presents itself, almost as if they were your patient, and that's amazing. So for example, here is a 55 year old with progressive abdominal pain and weight loss. And so if I want to click on this, it gives me their HPI. Um, that actually may be a, a case that I've already solved. I did. So I solved that answer already, but I can click solve right here. And this just gives me a 58 year old with ear pain and facial palsy. And then it just gives me part of their history and then click start. And it forces me to put a diagnosis. If I read about this in bilateral ear pain, I may think about, you know, a mass or a tumor. And I'm going to be very lazy here. But you can just say neoplastic disease and next finding. And then it gives you their HPI so you can read about stuff like that. And eventually it will give you their past medical history and their labs and every kind of piece of information, just like as you're their doctor, would be able to be used to say, oh, this is what I think the diagnosis is. And the nice part is eventually, as I do cases, um, it'll actually will give you um, whether or not. So like I solved this case um, at some point in my life. Um, and so I ended up getting, I think this one I didn't get right, but the answer was CNS me for. So um, it's a great resource to, again, I usually end up doing this when I am in the elevator, kind of going up and trying to see if I can solve the case before I get to my next patient of the day. Now, the next app that I love using is actually not in my medical folder, but it's something that I love to use. That's why it's in the middle of my phone, and that is Notion. Now, I've made videos on how I use, use Notion to kind of help my day to day life. Now, this is something that I use for the business as well as things for my personal life. But for medical purposes, I actually like to have these folders where every time I'm kind of learning something, then I will create kind of a folder for it. Or if there's something that I want to learn in the future, I create it. For example, as I just finished a whole month on the heart failure, heart transplant service, then I basically created a bunch of different notes um, on things that I was reading. And the beauty of Notion is that I can filter and sort. So, for example, there is a filter right now on all the topics related to cardiogenic shock, but let's just say I want to remove that and I click done. Then it will show me all my topics that I have written and studied about in the recent past. So whether it be things like chest pain stratification, cardiac amyloid, right heart failure. And so I really enjoy Notion because it just kind of gives me a lot of granularity on how I learned information. And then it's also nice because whenever I want to study or teach somebody like a medical student, then I can just say, oh, what do you want to learn about? Okay, you want to learn about inhalers or treatments of COPD or asthma. I already have a topic of that. Or if you want to learn about fungal workup, hyponatremia, kind of already made these topics. And so I can easily pull this up on my phone, get onto my whiteboard and teach, and most importantly, make sure that I don't remember the information. 
Next up, we're gonna go back into my medical folder and one of the apps that I got as an intern that I don't use as much anymore, but I think I definitely would recommend that you guys have this on your phone, it's empty on call. Now, a lot of times you will get called to see a patient about, you know, on a cross cover service, whether on internal medicine or you're a surgeon or whatever, and you're like, oh, they're having chest pain. What should I do? What type of things should I consider? And so it's a nice little brief um, update on how to evaluate the different types of things that you may have to think about as well as the things you can do. So if I think that they have costochondritis, give them an NSAID or some kind of treatment. If it's a panic attack, I can give them some Ativan. And if they're having something like bradycardia, which can be really concerning if you're a brand new doctor, then being able to understand, okay, what type of things should I be considering? What type of things should I be getting? Should I be getting an EKG? Answer is definitely. Um, and then how do I manage that, especially if the patient is doing worse um, and they're possibly going to code, then here are the things that I need to know, the doses that I need to be aware of. So having that in, your back pocket as you're going to your patient's room and just reading about it, super helpful. Now, MD on call was an app that I had to pay for at once, but again, it's been super helpful because especially when I was a brand new intern, I was like, oh, the patient has really high calcium. I'm not really sure what to make of that. And then it gives me a nice diagram that I can kind of look in through and say, like, oh, these are my diagnoses. These are the further tests that I should send. By the time my attendee gets there for the day, I'm like, oh, patient was hypercalcemic. This is what I ordered. You just kind of look like a boss. Now, the next app that I love using that is not in my medical folder, but it's just an app that I love using on my drives is things like Google Podcasts or your favorite podcast platform. So then I can listen to things like Cardio Nerds or Human uh, Clinical Problem Solvers and just kind of check out all their cases. And if I want to watch a case for the next day, I can just click, you know, plus, and then it'll be ready. But luckily my car has Android auto, so I can just plug this in, hit start. And then my touch screen will actually know that I want to play this podcast for the next day. And so I'll just play it without having me connect through Bluetooth or anything. Uh, but both of those podcasts are amazing. I love kind of going through them on my day to day, but also love learning about other things. So like real estate, um, and then watching or listening to podcasts about those, because even though you're in medicine, you need to be able to know the main things about being an adult for the future, finance being a really big important part of them. So I love using apps like Google Podcasts, as well as reading apps like Scribe and Kindle that I can do when the day is not as busy as a doctor and try to read about something, whether it be medical or not. Now, finally, an app that I still have on my phone, but I tend to use more when I was an intern and brand new to things like procedures and probably will be helpful to some of my surgeon friends or procedural friends is Touch Surgery. Now, this is a really, really cool app. And so I definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it. But let's just say you are going to do a bedside procedure like an abdominal paracetesis. You want to take some fluid out of somebody who has like cirrhosis or you want to just send it for testing, but you're not really sure how to do it. So you can click start. Uh, we'll just click restart. And it basically will walk you through how to position the patient, how to, you know, have the ultrasound and what you're looking for. And then it'll actually force you to like kind of be interactive and put the ultrasound there, what type of things you'll be looking for on your ultrasound. And as you move up and down below, um, and then essentially what you will be doing, we can do the whole procedure kind of virtually, um, and kind of practice actually cleaning the patient off. Um, and so I just think this is really cool. And just, just for satisfaction purpose, we're just going to do the entire thing. Um, so drawing out the lidocaine and this may seem obvious when you do it a few times, but if you're a brand new intern, you haven't done this procedure before, and just kind of understanding like how big of a gauge of a needle should I be using to inject my lidocaine versus like drawing it up, uh, that is super helpful. So, and this kind of gives you a nice picture of like what you're doing inside the body, what it looks like. So if you're ever gonna do an abdominal paracentesis or a central line, again, super, super helpful. Uh, that is pretty much it. But those guys are some of my favorite apps that I love using on a day to day. Things that I definitely use a little bit more when I was an intern, but things like UpToDay and MixApp and HumanDX, those are apps that I use on a daily basis, um, as well as some of the apps that I use back in medical school, like Anki, are still a part of my day to day. Um, but if you guys are interested or asking me about certain other apps that you may use or have heard about, make sure you drop them in the comment section down below. Now, if you're about to start your journey in residency or if you're already doing and you're kind of struggling, you want to learn how to do that better, definitely check out the Intern Survival Guide where you can really see the reviews that past students have gotten that really make you into a superstar medical physician much quicker than a lot of your colleagues. And if you're much earlier in the medical process and you want to understand how to really get a leg up, then check out some of the free as well as paid programs that we have down below. One of my favorites is my free eight step kind of study strategy that I use to go from 10 to five hours in medical school of studying. So definitely check that out down below. It's absolutely free. And in case you want every tip that I really wanted to give as a medical student or wish that I had known, then definitely check out the domination bundle, uh, which currently is making this video is $250 off. So that'll be linked down below in case you guys are interested 
interested. But with that being said, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the future if you want me to make more videos on like what's on my phone completely, not just the medical apps altogether. Be happy to do so or things on like my iPad or tablet. Maybe I can make a version of that if you guys are interested and the interest is there. So add the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video before you click off, hit that like button, hit it one, two, three more times. Really helps support the channel. So I'm super appreciative um, and also lets me know that you guys enjoy this content, make more like this lecture in the future. And if you're either new here, if you're lurking around the channel and you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button also to get more videos like this on a weekly basis. Hit that notification bell to know when new videos go out. But I am done babbling like I always do at the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for making it to the very end. I really appreciate your support. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on your journey. Thanks for being a part of mine as always. If you did enjoy this video, then check out this video on how you can study step by step like a pro in your medical journey, as well as this video on how you can use Anki like a pro to really help you kind of get the leg up. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.